They're hunted down in the wild across South Africa and killed just for their horns. I'm talking about rhinos, an endangered species being poached in increasing numbers. Now, since the first of this year, get this, a record 1,020 of them have been slaughtered. Now, that already tops the figure for the whole of 2013, proving the threat of poaching has only continued to escalate. Government officials say it's all part of a multi-billion dollar worldwide illicit wildlife trade. South Africa has worked to fight poaching with a number of initiatives, but still the killings have continued. A short time ago, I spoke with Jeffrey Gettleman, East African Bureau Chief for the New York Times. I began by asking him if we're close to seeing an entire species wiped out. A lot of people are really worried about extinction because there's only a few thousand rhinos of certain species still left. And the pressure on these animals is enormous and nobody's been able to stop the poaching. So all across Africa, you have networks of people that are looking to slaughter rhinos for their horns. And it's basically like a, a supply and demand problem. The demand is enormous, the supply is small. And I was talking to one uh, conservation a game ranger who said that this is like the war on drugs. It's unwinnable as long as there's a huge demand for rhino horn. And that's what we're seeing right now. And that demand, of course, is because of the price. I understand poachers can receive up to $95,000 for rhino horns. And we're now seeing terrorist networks like Boko Haram and Al Shabaab trading them. How much is this industry worth? It's worth millions, and it's crazy. Uh, a rhino horn can weigh something like five to eight kilos, and on the streets of Vietnam where people covet rhino horns because they believe that they have medicinal properties, uh, one kilo of rhino horn can cost $65,000. That's more than gold, that's more than cocaine, that's more than just about anything. So there's a huge industry that has, that has recently spawned around the poaching and trafficking of these horns. It's the same thing with ivory. I did a big series for the paper, the New York Times, about the ivory demand, and it's the same exact problem. You have parts of Asia where there's an enormous market for these products, and then the places that they're coming from are some of the worst governed, most chaotic, most corrupt. Uh, parts of, of Africa and when you put the two together there's just thousands of animals that are getting slaughtered and nobody's been able to stop it. Why is the demand so high in places like China and Vietnam um, and Thailand and, and does it need to be stopped there as opposed to at the source? That's exactly it. That's what everybody says. Now, people believe in Vietnam, people believe that rhino horn uh, carries, you know, super properties that can help cure cancer, cure impotence, cure a whole number of things. And as a result, the, the demand for ground up rhino horn, which is basically the same material that's in our fingernails and in our hair, uh, has been soaring as these economies have grown. So China now has a middle class of several hundred million people. Vietnam now has a middle class of tens of millions of people. These people have money to pursue these, these, these hobbies uh, to use animal products for medicinal properties. And that's where the demand is coming from. Now, the largest number of rhinos killed so far this year in the Kruger National Park. What are authorities there doing, the government, park rangers, to stop this illicit trade? They're trying a number of things. I, I went out there uh, somewhat recently, and they were trying to use drones, surveillance flights. One of the most interesting approaches to anti-poaching is trying to empower local communities and to say to people that live in these areas of Africa where these animals roam, listen, you're going to lose a lot of money in tourism and other forms of development if you don't protect these animals. People come from all around the world to your place to see these animals, and if these animals get wiped out, then you're out of, you know, your, your schools are going to lose money, there's not going to be as many jobs, you're not going to get direct benefits from all the tourists who come. 